We're going to start out with making a variable right away, just so we have an example to look at. We're going to make it a string variable, and we'll name it my string. And what we've just done is called declaring a variable, which essentially just means making the variable. To declare a variable, we indicate the type of variable we want. So here we wanted a variable of type string, and then we give it an identifier, which is just another way of saying the name for it. So the name of this variable is my string. And a variable essentially is just something that we hold a value inside of. So we're going to put a value inside of my string. I'll just write, this is the text in my string. What we've just done here is called initializing the variable, which is just putting a value inside of it. So we've made a variable called my string, that is a string variable, and we've assigned it a value on this line of this is the text in my string. Strings are a really common type of variable in Java. They're essentially just variables that hold a sequence of characters inside of them. Or just one character, but usually a sequence of characters. And up here where we declared the variable and then initialized it, oftentimes we'll do that just in one line. So we'll say string my string equals this is the text in my string. And it's giving me an error here now because I have two variables declared that both have the same name, which we cannot do. So I'll just get rid of this top one. Now, if we wanted to print my string to the screen, all we would have to say is system.out.println my string. Now, if we run this, then it's going to print, this is the text in my string to the console. So that is how to declare and initialize variables in a nutshell. Now we're going to look at some of the different types of variables. Specifically, we're going to look at the eight types of primitive variables in Java. You don't need to memorize them all right away, but it's good to be familiar with them and know the types of data that they can hold. There are a few that you definitely need to know when you're starting Java, like strings and a couple of the other ones that we're going to look at. But for the most part, when you start out, just being familiar with them is enough. So we looked at a string. Next, we're going to look at a char. To make a char, we'll just follow the same pattern we used for a string. We'll say char my char equals. And this time, instead of double quotations like we used in the string, instead for chars, we use single quotations. And inside of a char, we can hold one character. Make that character a letter or a number or a special character like an exclamation mark. Now, if we say system.out.println my char, then it's just going to print the exclamation mark to the screen. So we have, this is the text in my string, that's from this print statement here, and then we have the exclamation mark here, printed from system.out.println my char. And next we'll make a byte. So we'll go byte my byte equals 127. So bytes hold whole numbers anywhere from negative 128 to 127. To be honest, you're not going to use bytes a whole lot. It's just good to be familiar with them. Same with shorts. A short is similar to a byte, just it has a slightly bigger range, and so it takes up a little bit more space in storage. It can hold numbers anywhere from negative 32,768 to 32,767. And then we have ints, which you do use all the time in Java. We'll say int my int equals 2,147,483,647, which is the maximum value that an int can hold. If we want to store a value larger than that, then we're going to need a long. We'll say long my long. The maximum value we can store in a long is 
nine quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807. And to let Java know that it's a long, we need to include an L after it. Usually we'll use a capital L just to stop it from getting confused with a one. And with all of these variables here, we can't store decimal values. We have some specific variable types for storing decimal values. We have floats, which store about six or seven decimal digits. And to let Java know that it's a float, we need to include an F after. It can be lowercase or uppercase, up to you. Otherwise, we'll get an error because Java tries reading it as a double and gets confused. Double is the next type we're going to look at. A double is similar to a float, just it can hold more decimals after it. We can do up to 15 decimals. And we only have one type left, and that's going to be Boolean, which is another type that we will use all the time in Java. The only two possible values for Boolean are true or false. So we have Boolean, my Boolean equals true, or we could have my Boolean equals false. And we can change the value of variables like we did right here. Originally, my Boolean was true, but here we changed it to false. Likewise, we could take, say, my int and change its value to 26. And now if we print the value of my int, it's going to be 26 instead of the 2 billion that we had up here. If we save and run this, we have 26 here. There's a lot to take in when you're starting Java. When you're getting started out, you can probably get by just by knowing booleans, doubles, ints, and strings. Now we'll take a super quick look at the scope of variables. The scope just refers to where in the program a variable can be accessed from. We haven't gone over if statements in this series yet, but I'm going to use one right now just to show what the scope of a variable is. I'm going to say if my int is greater than zero, then make a new variable of type boolean called greater than zero and assign it a value of true. So what's going to happen here is if the variable my int is greater than zero, then a new variable is going to be created called greater than zero that is equal to true because the number will be greater than zero. When we talk about the scope of a variable, it just means that the variable only exists in the area that it was created in. So this Boolean variable greater than zero right now only exists inside of this if statement. So inside of this if statement, we could say system.out.println greater than zero, and it's just going to print the value of greater than zero for us. And the value of greater than zero right now is true. But if we took this print statement and we put it outside of the if statements, then we're going to get an error because greater than zero does not exist anymore. It only exists inside of this if statement here. What we could do if we want to be able to print it outside of this if statement is just declare and initialize it up here. Boolean greater than zero equals false. And then if the number is greater than zero, then the value of greater than zero can just get changed inside of the if statement. And then we can still access greater than zero outside of the if statement because it was declared inside of the main method. And so anything inside of the main method now has access to greater than zero.